Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD bodybuilder, back with another video. Today we're gonna to be giving you a full hypertrophy program based on the push-pull legs upper-lower split. This is a really popular split that combines push-pull legs and upper-lower. It's set up for five days per week, and this program will be low volume, so well-suited for beginners. As you might know, push-pull legs and upper-lower are two very popular splits in the science-based niche. Typically, I recommend that you try to train each muscle group at least twice per week, and both of these splits achieve that. There are, however, some disadvantages to both of these splits that some people have tried to mitigate by combining the two into a five-day push-pull legs upper-lower split. This split, as traditionally written, is pretty intuitive. So on the push day, you train muscles involved in pushing movements, so your chest, triceps, and shoulders. On pull days, you train your back and biceps. On leg days, you obviously train your lower body. And then on the upper body day, you train all the muscles of your upper body day. And then you have another leg day. And this is a pretty solid setup. However, there are a few modifications that I would recommend making that I'll be explaining later in the video. Quick outline for today, I'm going to be giving you a full science-based hypertrophy program based on five days per week on my modified push-pull legs upper lower split. We'll start off with a program walkthrough where I share everything you need to know to run the program, including exercises, sets, and reps. Then we'll go through the weekly setup, which is how to space the workouts throughout the week. And lastly, we'll talk about the pros and cons of the push-pull legs upper lower split as well as the modifications that I've made to address some of the disadvantages. If you wanna see more free science-based hypertrophy programs, make sure you like the video, subscribe, and let's get into it. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is my modified push-pull legs upper lower program. It's designed with low volumes, so with a beginner in mind, and it's set up for five days per week. So you've got pull day, push day, your lower body day one, upper body day, and lower body day two. Here are the exercises and there are your sets and reps. Down here we have the total number of sets for each session so you have an idea of workout length. And down here we have our muscle group weekly set volumes for quads, glutes and hamstrings, chest, back, side delts, biceps, triceps and calves. You'll see right away that this is a low volume program so well suited for a beginner or someone who responds to low volumes. This is a modified version of the base push pull legs upper lower split. So I'll try and point out the changes that I make as we go along, and we'll talk about my justification later. So starting off with pull day, we start off with T-bar row for the back, three sets of six to 10. Then we go into dumbbell rows for the back, three sets of eight to 12. Then we have lat pull downs, three sets of 10 to 15. You'll see that I start off with my heavier, tougher exercise and move on to lighter work with heavier rep ranges later in the workout. Then we have dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12, standing calf raises, four sets of eight to 12, and then abs, which I recommend you do three tri-sets. And a tri-set is basically where you have three exercises where you do one after the other back to back, and you would count that as one tri-set. This is just a good way of fitting in more training volume. Moving on to push day, we start off with bench press for the chest, three sets of five to eight, followed by incline dumbbell press also for the chest, two sets of six to 10. Then we have a superset with the easy bar, so easy bar skull crushers, three sets of eight to 12, and then easy bar curls, three sets of eight to 12. Then we move on to a rope superset. So rope hammer curls for the biceps, three sets of 10 to 15, and then rope press downs for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15. And I move some of my side delt training and calf training onto pull days. After that, we have lower body day one. So we start off with back squats for the quads, three sets of five to eight. After that, we have deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of five to eight. Moving on, we have Bulgarian split squats, which I'll count for quads here, three sets of eight to 12, and then leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of 10 to 15. After that, we have some side delt work. So upright rows, three sets of H12, and cable lateral raises, three sets of 10 to 15. You'll see that the modifications we made so far will allow us to train our biceps when they're fresh, not fatigued after pulling movements, and train our side delts also when they're fresh and not already fatigued by pushing movements. Moving on to our upper body day, we start off with bench press again for the chest, two sets of five to eight, and then barbell overhead press, three sets of five to eight. You'll see that I've chosen to start this workout with my horizontal press, this is assuming that you're trying to prioritize your bench press in this program. After that, we have weighted chin-ups for the back, three sets of six to 10. Then we have close grip bench press, which I count for both triceps and chest, three sets of six to 10. Machine calf raises, four sets of 10 to 15. And lastly, abs, three triceps. Lastly, we have lower body day two. So we start off with back squats for the quads, three sets of five to eight. Then deadlifts again for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of five to eight. After that, we have Romanian deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of six to 10. And then we have leg extensions for the quads, three sets of 10 to 15. You'll see that in this program, we squat, bench, and deadlift twice per week each. And this is designed with the beginner in mind. As a beginner, having a bit more frequency in these main basic movements will allow you to progress them faster. 
since you'll have more exposures and more chances to increase weight, and you'll just have more technical practice. So if you're a beginner or you're just returning from a long layoff, I'd recommend progressing these linearly. That is, trying to add a little bit of weight with every workout. Now, if you are a little bit more experienced and you want some more variation, you can switch up your exercise selection. This is just a suggestion as a starting point. You'll also see that I try to introduce different methods of programming in my different programs. So ultimately, you can take ideas from each of my different videos and implement them as you see fit. Finishing off our lower body day two, we have lying curls for the biceps. So this is where you lie flat on a bench, three sets of six to 10, and then dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts three sets of eight to 12. Now that we've gone through each of the days, let's zoom out a little bit and look at the modifications I made. First of all, we moved our bicep training away from pull days and our upper body days and put them on the day after. Earlier in the week, this would be push day. And then later in the week, this would be lower body day two. And we basically swapped bicep training with some of our side delt training, which we put onto pull day and our calf training, which we moved from our lower body days onto our pull day and onto upper body day. The other thing I did is I took away our side delt training from our push and upper body days and split them across pull day and our lower body days. This allows you to train your side delts when they're fresh and it gives them a higher three times per week frequency, which I think the side delts benefit from. Now notice that we actually train our biceps four times per week. And this is because back training actually does indirectly train your biceps. One quick rule of thumb is that when you have indirect and then direct work coming back to back, for example, on pull day and push day here, we train our biceps indirectly through our back training and then directly through curls on push day. When this happens, you want the indirect train to come first. So we train our biceps indirectly through our pulling movements and then we train them directly the day after. And the reason here is that your biceps won't be that fatigued after your pull day. So you'll still be able to train them well the day after. But if you had it the other way around, where your biceps were trained directly and then they were fatigued going into your pull day, having really sore biceps on pull day might actually impact the productivity of your pulling movements. And this way it would actually indirectly damage your back training. So you'll see that I usually try to have my arm training come after my pushing and pulling movements. Now notice that with this beginner type program, we really focus on free weight compound movements. These are going to be the best bang for your buck and they're really important for beginners to get a handle on. Understanding these movement patterns will really pay off in the long run. The other thing is we really stick to bread and butter rep ranges. Everything is basically in the five to 15 rep range. Obviously you can play with this to find what works best for you, but for beginners, I'd recommend that they focus on the basics. All right, now that you've seen the program, let's talk about how to set it up across the week. Now, my preferred setup for this program would be pull, push, lower one, rest, upper, lower two. Now let's talk about why I like to set it up this way. Contrary to the way it's actually said in the name, push, pull, legs, I actually like starting off with pull and then push and then legs. And the reason is, if given the choice, I'd rather not have pull day and leg day back to back. The idea is that you want to spread out your axial loading as much as possible. Axial loading is where you have compressive forces on the spine, like with heavy squats, deadlifts, or barbell rows. And if you are using a lot of these movements, they tend to generate a lot of fatigue. And you want to spread out the fatigue as much as possible. That is fatigue distribution. So if you did want to have heavy rows in your program, you'd have it well spread out from your leg days. Now, the next point is that when we have upper and lower days coming back to back, I usually like having the upper body day come first because a heavy leg day can affect your upper body training the next day, but not so much the other way around. You'll see that this split does a nice job of spreading out your upper body training from itself and your lower body training. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons of the push pull legs upper lower split. One of the disadvantages of the standard upper lower split is that your upper body days tend to be significantly longer than your lower body days. And this is because there are just more muscle groups to train in your upper body. The problem is that you may not have time to give your upper body enough training volume. And one of the big advantages of the push pull legs upper lower split is that you even out the training volume for your upper and lower body. The push pull legs segment has two upper body days for one lower body day. And this allows you to prioritize your upper body if you want to. Next, the push pull legs upper lower split has a built in twice per week frequency. And as you saw in the program, some muscle groups actually get higher frequencies. For example, the side delts and the biceps. Since we separated direct bicep training from your back training, you'll actually be training biceps four times per week since they are involved indirectly in your pulling movements. Lastly, the push pull legs upper lower split works well for basic strength programming. If you have strength goals, it's very easy to plug in a beginner strength type program in a plug and play fashion. On the other hand, some people will say that push pull legs favors the upper body since two upper body days to one lower body day is quite a lot. So having this combination of the two splits can provide a nice balance. All right, now let's talk about the cons of the traditional push pull legs upper lower split and some of the modifications that I made to the split to address these. 
Starting off, this is an asymmetric split. That is, you start off with a push-pull leg segment, and then you have an upper lower segment later in the week. There's nothing wrong with an asymmetric split fundamentally, but there are a few things you'd want to keep in mind. First of all, you may not be able to track progress as easily from session to session, especially for the upper body, where this asymmetry lies. For example, for a back training, you'll notice that we have a lot more back training on pull day rather than on the upper body day later in the week. So performance between those two days won't be necessarily comparable. The solution to this is to track progress from week to week rather than within the week. The other disadvantage of an asymmetric split is that your fatigue distribution is not going to be perfect. Using the back as an example again, your back is going to be a lot more fatigued after your pull day rather than after your upper body day. Ideally, you'd want your volume a little bit more evenly spread out, but this won't matter so much for beginners training with low volumes. Next con of the push-pull legs upper lower split is that your arms and your shoulders are fatigued after your pushing and pulling movements on your push and pull days earlier in the week. This is just inherent to the push-pull leg split, where when you train all of your pushing muscles on one day, your chest, shoulders, and triceps, by the time you get to triceps, they are going to be fatigued after your compound pushing movements. And the same goes with the biceps being fatigued after back training. Now this is suboptimal because when your arms and shoulders are fatigued by pushing and pulling movements, they won't perform as well on the direct training, so you won't be able to lift as much weight for as many reps. And if you look at training volume from sets times reps times weight lifted, you'll see that you won't be doing as much work across the week. And training volume is important for hypertrophy. So you always want to be thinking about how to set up your program to maximize the performance of all muscle groups across the week. Now you'll see that I've actually addressed this con in my modified split, where I've taken our bicep training and moved it away from back training. When you move direct bicep work to the day after your back training, you'll be able to train your biceps when they're fresh. And you'll see that I've done something similar with side delts. This way you'll be able to perform better overall when you look at set by set performance. Last con of the push pull legs upper lower split here is that your pull days tend to be short. This is just because you have fewer muscles to train than on your push and leg days. You'll see that I've fixed this issue by moving around our side delt, calf, and ab training. Direct training for small muscle groups like these can be shuffled around pretty easily in your training week. So you can use them to balance out your session lengths. Finally, in terms of modifications, you'll see that we're training our biceps and side delts with relatively higher frequencies. The side delts get trained three times per week and the biceps get trained four times per week when you include the indirect training from back. These modifications might not make that much of a difference when you're training with low volumes as a beginner. But as you increase your training volumes, they will matter more and more. So even though you might be a beginner training with low volumes, I wanted to optimize the split so that when you do add volume, you'll accommodate it well. Lastly, I want to emphasize that these modifications are individual, so feel free to make changes as you see fit. These templates are just going to be a starting point to get you off the ground in terms of your training. I will be sharing this full program as I've laid it out in an Excel file in my Facebook group. So if you haven't already, check out my Facebook group in the link in the description below. You can join the group and download the program for free. If you want to take your knowledge to the next level, check out my affiliate link for Mass in the description below. Mass is an expert research review run by some of the guys I really trust in the science-based bodybuilding field. Every month they put out a concise PDF, audio and video files that distills the latest research into a practical form. I know I don't have time to read every single new study coming out, so it's a great way to up your knowledge game if you really want to maximize those gains. That's all for now guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave me a comment below. In particular, have you tried push-pull legs upper lower and what was your experience? For more science-based training programs, make sure you subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time.